I want you to get together. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Nephilim Look Like Clowns. So let's get straight into this one. I was uh, scrolling through this website called Circopedia, the free encyclopedia of the International Circus. So an encyclopedia of all things clowns. And I was scrolling through the archive photos here, and you can see numerous uh, famous clowns of bygone times. Um, but one stood out to me, um, mainly because it's the only one that seems like a modern iteration of a clown with this photo. It's a lady called uh, Antoshka. That's the character's name, Antoshka. It's based on a character from an old Soviet cartoon of the... Uh, of the USSR, you know, and Antoshka was a character who was considered lazy, you know, and didn't didn't contribute towards the greater good of the communist regime, while the hard workers, you know, would would mock this character, um, as he would be more of a a user of the hard work rather than a contributor to the hard work. Uh, anyway, this character Antoshka, this this lady, um, she dreamed of becoming a ballet dancer as a child, but she basically fell ill and couldn't train to be a ballet dancer young enough um, in order to be good enough for Russian standards. Uh, so instead she was, um, well, her friend suggested, why don't you just join the circus? And she actually did and became very successful. So success uh, successful, in fact, that she was dubbed the Queen of Clowns. Um, yeah. The public and the media awarded her the honorary title of Queen of Clowns. And she now has her own school in Germany um, where she teaches clowning. Um, so this woman, you know, just an interesting character. Um, I think just an example that, you know, clowning is is considered a noble pursuit um, for many people in many countries, you know. And there's a picture over here with another famous clown called Oleg Popov. And she did a show with him, um, which I believe this photo is probably from, but... I was looking at this guy, and he is also quite a renowned fellow in the uh, the clowning world. And he's wearing this outfit here, you know, this uh, suit with the black and white checkered cap. Um, and, you know, as far as clowns go, this is quite toned down. And this has been his signature look since forever. Um, so if we back this up, you can see a bit more information about him. Um, let's close that. Yeah, you know, he's, this guy's been clowning for a long time. He was born in uh, July 1930, and he is also a Soviet Russian clown. And he's highly decorated, you know. You look at these awards and honours this guy has got from the USSR and uh, other European uh, award entities. And, you know, this guy is considered the greatest clown of all time by many. Though I'm sure that's up for debate within the clown world. But I just think it's interesting that, you know, clowning is considered this noble pursuit um in in uh you know northern western and even eastern cultures it's everywhere around the world they have this this idea of a sacred clown and i guess really we're not any difference you know and you know they <clears throat> they take pictures of somebody who's supposed to be a joke in really serious ways like this you know to make him look like you know just a a deep individual um and i just i just found that interesting but you know, I was looking at this guy's attire, and it reminded me that you know most circuses have have this character, don't they? The the ringmaster or the ringleader, as it's known. Um, you know, so I was looking into the idea of the ringmaster, and originally, apparently, it was uh, referred to as an equestrian director. So it was the guy who directed the horses around the circle, um, which I suppose is where we get the merry-go-round. Uh, symbolism from you know horses going around in a circle on this this machine and in the center um would be the ringmaster the controller you know and i was looking into this idea of the ringmaster and imagery for the ringmaster and it it, it reminded me of of something that i uh, researched myself i think there's images up here before we move on it turns out there's a film um called the ringmaster it looks like some kind of low budget b movie but i find it interesting that the uh they went for a white face with red lips kind of makeup to describe this character you know and someone mentioned a comment to me uh, not so long ago about you know you, you should try and decipher the hierarchy of this this these clown demons and i was thinking 
think this hatted character is one of the leaders of the clown factions of the Nephilim spirits in some in some way. If if we want to start making hierarchies of these demons, I assume this this person is is a high ranking officer of some kind. Um, you know, you look you look at this character, and he's he's kind of the leader, the dictator, the the conductor of the circus. You know, and symbolically speaking, that is the the leader of the clowns or the leaders of the Nephilim spirits in some way. Uh, you know, so I was looking into this idea of the ringmaster, and it says here, you know, the main function of a ringmaster was to direct the attention of the audience. In the days before modern lighting equipment and amplification, most acts performed mute, accompanied only by the circus in-house brass band. It was the ringmaster's loud voice that was necessary to cut through the noise and get the audience's attention to announce the next act. You know, so the ringmaster is the person whose attention gets directed to while everything gets moved around and the the area gets shifted. I just, I just think that's interesting to bear in mind when we're talking about um, these being analogues for spiritual practices. Uh, funnily enough, the ringmaster was a, if you want to go to popular culture, was actually a bad guy in the Marvel Universe. Um, and here he is wearing this, this green suit with this purple hat. Um... And he, you know, he had his own um, entourage of villains, and I just think it's interesting that those villains included a a woman who controls snakes. So we're talking about serpentine imagery here, and obviously we understand that a lot of these Nephilim spirits had serpentine-like features. Um, think uh, Quetzalcoatl, for example, feathered serpent symbology. And they had the clown. We had a cannonball man who who was wearing this helmet. That was shaped suspiciously like uh, he had an elongated skull. And we know that the Nephilim skulls were elongated, you know, from images of Nephilim. Um, but then you look look at the older magazines, or newer, I'm not sure, but it seems like his entourage changed, and a literal devil was a part of them. And I don't know anywhere in a circus where you would see a, a character literally dressed like the devil. It seems a little bit on the nose, if we're considering my theory. And we have this... Uh, this checkerboard, fractal-looking uh, evil clown figure here as well, of course. You know, so I think we have the ringleader of the demons, the ringmaster, and his entourage of clown-like entities. Um, I mean, we even have a giant here in the background of his clan of, uh, you know, bizarre people, uh, tourist attractions of the past. So that being said, you know, we are, I looked into the ringmaster some more, and in popular culture, it seems like we have a slender man analog known as uh, the ringmaster. I think a game was made about this, where it's very similar to uh, how slender man worked. You know, this this giant slender creature would chase you, and you'd have to look at it to make it stop moving. It seems like it's a part of something called the mimic, um, which is a series of some kind. I don't know any details about this yet. I think it's something I may have to look into. But it does seem like there is a a character in there which has this wide toothed grin with a serpentine like smile wearing this top hat. Um So yeah, this got me thinking about something I've actually already discussed on my channel, and that's the Hatman entity. Now a lot of people have claimed to see, you know, shadow figures um, during sleep paralysis. And, uh, you know, they can't move and these shadowy entities enter the room and uh, torture the people, sit on their chest to make it as though they can't breathe. But one entity which is common among many people across many continents who, you know, have no reason to share the same experience but do, say this, this shadowy figure with a hat came. Um, and he was kind of the scariest entity they have ever encountered. Um, and there's a book by um, an author called Heidi Hollis who has compiled hundreds of these encounters into one book, uh, people's testimonies of them. And I actually own this book. It's a good read. Um, uh, but I, I myself was haunted by this, uh, this Hatman figure. Um, and I made a video about it. You can go to my channel and find it called The Hatman, A Demonic Encounter. And I drew what I saw here. And this is what I saw. This is before I knew anything at all about any of this. You know, this was a long time ago I had this this vision, this dream, this nightmare, where I was being hunted down by this entity. 
Um, so it, it haunted me so much I had to draw what I saw, and here it is. And you can watch the video which describes the entire dream I had. And this stuck with me for a long time, you know, this imagery of this hat man, this, this demon. And you know, this, this, people have told me this is reminiscent of, you know, how pimps dress, which I thought was interesting. You know, and <laughs> it's a funny bit of information, but I think the idea, that culture, that that the spiritual manifests into the physical through clothing, and I think it's it says a lot that you know um, somebody who keeps people in sexual servitude and slavery, the leader, you know, of these people um, would be dressing like this. And this also reminded me of something else, which uh, actually a someone commented and also reminded me to bring this up but it, this is also reminiscent of a particular character um not only the ringmaster which i mentioned before you know the leader of the demon demonic troop but also a particular iwa as they're known or spirit being in the vodou religion and he's known as a uh, baron semedi um or baron saturday in uh, english you know so this is a french word and no, Haitian vo uh, Vodou is very complicated, and I cannot right now give a full breakdown in the short time I have to make this video of just the complexities of this this religion. Um, but I'm going to do my best to give you a quick summary. But I recommend you watch some videos yourself about this in order to get a good idea of what this is. But essentially, um, Haitian uh vodou practice as we know it as a state religion now um developed during a time when uh, african slaves were brought over by french uh, colonists um to haiti you know um as slaves basically and they lived quite a brutal life but they brought with them their african uh, ancestor spirit rituals and it kind of blended for a long time over, over 500 years of history here with um catholicism and uh, freemasonry and it became this strange blend of the of the african uh, cultures and the catholic uh, catholic cultures kind of kind of religion and it became this thing that was on as kind of voodoo or v uh, voodoo in like a a more mainstream understanding of it like kind of a tourist to actually understanding of it um but voodoo is so complex i mean haiti itself was was taken over in a um a revolution by these slaves um, and I got a, a bit of information on this but for what I learned uh, watching videos and researching this uh, if I can find it there was this this ritual done <clears throat> just before the revolution took place um, and the is it uh, Bois Keman ceremony I may have butchered that I'm sorry if I have um, but this, this ceremony was done where leaders were appointed and sacrifices were made, um, you know, animals throats were slit, you know, and uh, blood was drank and it, it's believed by many of the, uh, the Christians of Haitian, you know, that that day the Haitians Vodus made a deal with Satan in order to win a victory over the slave masters. Um, and this is disputed, you know. Um, the the Vodou practices say no, we did not make a deal with Satan. But you know, the evangelical sides and the Christian side of the nation do say no, no, you know, Haitian Haitian people have been cursed by one thing after another since the 18th century, after swearing a pact to the devil. You know, um, it's you know, it's it's a bizarre religion, and and there's a lot of it that's just shrouded in occult mystery. Um, but one of the main gods, or Iwas, of a particular family of spirits, known as the Gede family, is this Baron Semedi, and he looks like the Hatman. He looks like a ring leader. You know, we'll go to images here, and this is the typical look of him. And I don't think it can be ignored when looking at this this um, this Nephilim connection. You know, so the the, the Haitian Vodou practitioners, you know, they know what they're doing. They consider the, the Iwa, these spirits, is what they call them, spirits, as things that they welcome into their bodies openly during ceremonies. 
um, in order to gain many things, you know, uh, advice, good luck, strength, uh, cures from illnesses, and it, it's practiced, you know, all throughout um, Haiti and by many different cultures. I think there's supposed to be 21 nations of spirits, and it, it's so complex that not even those who are in the Vodou culture know all about them. Um, it's, it's very bizarre. It's very complicated, but one of the major spirits is this Baron Semedi, and he's said to have many aspects, um, many aspects, and one of them is Baron Criminal. Um, if I can find the image here. Yeah, and he's said to be the one that's feared the most because he is the first murderer who has been condemned to death, so he's the spirit of, of a murderer, and not necessarily a particular murderer, but just the spirit of murder in general. That's kind of how I, I've come to understand it. And people who get possessed by this spirit do horrible things and people fear it when it happens, you know. Um, a person possessed by Baron Criminal shouts obscenities, spits libations to all criminals and threatens to kill surrounding people who violate them. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing, you know, these people clearly worship the spirits on the other side of the veil. They openly say that's what they're doing. But they just consider them a good thing, you know. And they also have this weird Catholicism mixed in with it, where they believe in a in a, in a all knowing good God who controls everything. But they don't really pray to him. They go to the Iwa spirits first in order to intercede on their behalf to get good stuff from the God. So my my interpretation here, from my perspective, you know, and this is going to be considered probably false by the Haitian people themselves. But from what I can gather. It seems like the Nephilim spirits have fooled these people into believing that they are ancestor spirits who can intercede on their behalf to get to God. And to do that, they have to do some pretty horrible, sacrificial, disturbing things, you know. Um, but yeah, this Baron Criminal is an interesting one. Because I was looking for an image of what does this criminal one look like, and I found this this interesting set of images from um, some from Flickr. This person had compiled images from an exhibition they saw of uh, Vodou objects from Haiti. <clears throat> so scrolling through this, I mean, look how disturbing some of this is. And I found it fascinating that this one popped up, you know, which looks just like what I drew when I saw the hat man. He has a cane in his hand. He's wearing this purple attire with this, this hat, just like what I drew. And this was years ago. You know, this video alone came out seven years ago. And, you know, I had this vision probably three years, two years prior to this. So this is nine years ago. And I'm only really just discovering this now, to be honest. Look at this. The parallels are uncanny. And it's, you know, it's, I think, I think this is, definitely worth mentioning it as a part of this series but you know the spirits have manifested clearly in this particular culture this haitian uh, vodou culture and i did find an image of criminal um the aspect of baron semedi here and i looked at this and thought well this is similar to what we've been discussing with the clown like fractal uh, red and white multicolored design you know and this is a part of this this person here this flicker um person's um, gallery you know here it is uh bizu criminal or baron he's put as a question mark you know and this this culture is obsessed with death and some of the most disturbing representations of their the 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 family of spirits they worship in particular i mean look at these you know more demonic than clown-like, but still the clown-like aesthetic is buried under this. It's there. You know, and these are, these are spirits. These are de dead spirits. They are spirits of, of the dead, you know. And they really lean into that aspect in this particular religious culture. So I think, it, you know, it's definitely something you guys should probably look into yourself, you know. <clears throat> and obviously... There's so much Freemason symbolism in the in the sigils they create to represent their gods. So this is the sigil for Baron Semedi, you know. And it's it's disturbing. Disturbing stuff. But I thought you guys would find it interesting. 
and I thought it'd probably be a good idea to bring this to you, but the parallels, you know, between the ringleader, the ringmaster of the circus, you know, the circus being an image for the fractal matrix that the clowns or the Nephilim are trapped in, you know, and the clowns circle round and are dictated and controlled by the ringmaster, the hat man, <clears throat> you know, the hat man demonic entity seen by thousands of people and tormented by thousands of people during sleep paralysis. The same hat man, which appears to be worshipped by voodoo religions, you know, and probably many other which I haven't shown here, which I'm sure you guys out there will show me and tell me in the comments. But this hat man figure is a running theme. And in terms of creating a hierarchy for the, these demons, I, I certainly think this, this character plays a high ranking role <clears throat> to the legions and the army of the Nephilim spirits that are warring against mankind. Um, so I thought I'd bring that to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, as always, a thanks to my patrons. Um, I couldn't be doing this without you guys. If you want to join, you can find the links in the description below. Uh, so thanks for listening, guys. That's all I've got to bring to you today. And as always, God bless. I want you to get together.